What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. I've been off for about a week and I had to say I really enjoyed it. I wasn't planning on being being off YouTube for that long. But once I was off for two or three days, I was like, man, I'm I'm not like I'm not watching the news, I'm not I'm not up to date on anything. I feel freaking great, feel amazing. I haven't heard anything or even listened to much YouTube videos on uh, anything pushing the loosh narrative. If you're unfamiliar with the word loosh, loosh is uh I think it's a made up word. My friend group occasionally uses it. Uh, I've seen it on some Substack vlogs, but essentially Loosh is negative energy that you feed third party entities for, uh, for a real secular way to say it without going like super woo woo down the, down the real, real crazy dark spiritual path of like there are these demon like entities and they can't exactly exist in our dimension. And so, you know, for them to exist, for them to have any, uh, any base, basis here, we have to feed them. Uh, we have to allow them to exist. You had a president once who said, we have nothing to fear but fear itself. It, fear is kind of fake and gay. It's kind of like a made up psychological construct in our minds uh, where we psychologically are playing games with ourselves or maybe this will be good, maybe this will be bad. It doesn't really matter until that exact moment where it has some sort of consequential effect. And uh, and a lot of what's going around the internet, at least in like my news feeds, probably me, I search this type of stuff, is a lot of just like, bird flu is coming, there's gonna be an egg shortage, there's gonna be a fuel shortage, there's gonna be war, could be World War Three. Actually, nuclear wars are really survivable. Like, how about peace talks, guys? Like, how about, like, let countries and nations do them? Like, why do we have to go police the world? Or, like, you know, why do we have to go create the glo the next global depression? Like, why is it gonna be us, like, with the US sanctions? Oh, well, there's a lot of inflation out there. Putin bad. It's like, you know those people that you have in your life that are just like, they're, they're just like about the next thing. They're like, stay home, it saves lives. Go get your mandated medicine. It's good for you, it saves lives, and it's compliant with Dr. Fauch. Or like, you know, the, whatever the next thing is, like Ukraine, and like, I didn't even know what the flag of Ukraine was until like three weeks ago, when it started showing up on people's like profiles. You know, and you're like, do you guys even know what Ukraine is? Like, done some, done a little, little history in Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine's a pretty corrupt place, man. Like, we got, we have no business being there. We shouldn't, you know, we shouldn't be there. But nonetheless, been off, we had some life events happen. Had to put down an older dog. It's kind of sad. And, and then uh, it was spring break, so we've got you know spring break for the kids. So we've been hanging out, doing doing farming activity. Actually, I've had some videos. I might ship them. I've actually I've recorded two or three videos. I just haven't I haven't put them up because I'm like ah, I don't know. That was pretty real. Like I got done filming, and I was like ah, I need like a private. I need to make some of these videos private because. YouTube likes it nice and fake and, and a little bit on the gay side, like where it's, you can't say too many things that are real or you're getting strikes. You get like two or three strikes, you're like off this platform. And I'm not super bullish on this platform long term, but YouTube has been the king for 10 years, probably will remain so for another five. And uh, I, I meet a lot of you guys on here. I've run in, like I was at the beach two weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, more than two. I'm like walking by some guys like you outside travel I'm like yeah he's like dude I watch all your stuff um I believe he was Russian by the way so I'm sorry if I, I didn't catch his name but if you're watching uh you know good to see you so I mean I want to utilize this channel to be helpful to people and uh basically broadcast ideas the way I see things kind of have a record of being right or wrong, which I think is interesting. I, I, I wish I had had more of like a blog or a diary longer, like a longer time ago, like a, like here are my thoughts, here are my ideas. When I was really young, like when I was in college, I was like, man, what if I put out ideas and then like 10 years later, I disagree with those ideas. I thought that would be like the worst thing. So I just did put them out. I just talked about it with my friend groups. And, uh, and then it was a few years ago, I was like, yeah, it's time to, we need to put out ideas. People need to put out ideas, getting through this, this period of history. Um, anyway, put out a lot of ideas on Instagram. You guys can follow the Instagram stories. I don't post a lot there, but I do do a decent amount of stories and they're pretty raw and obviously unedited and uncut. 
and eventually I'm sure Instagram will remove me but at this point in time I just say whatever I want on stories and um, and it's working so far I don't do any crazy posts though I just say whatever I want because the world we live in is really hilarious it's like it's really hard to say like I was reading a proverb this morning and it was like just as the rich rule over the poor so the borrower is slave to the lender and I never, I always got the borrower is slave to the lender part out of it, but I never really understood just as the rich rule over the poor. And I'm like, hmm, you know, like that's literally been true now for like a long time. I think this, this, this is written by Solomon. So it's in Proverbs and it's like Proverbs 21, 22. Yeah. And, uh, and it's like, all right, well, like 4,000, you know, 3,000 years ago, he's writing this stuff. And, uh, and it's still true. And so we're, it's funny because nowadays we're talking about like how the global elite are doing some really crazy things. And, and our, our domestic political elite, which I really think are more globalists than, than, uh, than nationalists, which is not a problem. I actually think one of the best strategies to survive and thrive over the next decade is to become a micro globalist. We'll have more on that later, but I don't think all of your eggs should be tied up in one nation if you have the ability or or you want to put forth the effort so that you have the ability uh, to create that type of, of wealth. Um, because it's not it's not like millionaire status to do, but like just this, this, this week, I was like, you know what I need to do? I need to have some precious metals in other countries, meaning like two or more. And so this past week, I've been working on getting those type of accounts set up. It's actually one of the two non-reportable IRS assets. So it's a non-reportable line item uh, to the IRS uh, as far as precious metals held in a non-financial institution held outside of the United States. It's non-reportable. And so I was like, you know, it's kind of that, I'm kind of at that spot in life where I'm like, I, I need to do this. Like, I've, I've been denying doing this for a long time. I was like, oh, I'm never going to have to, you know, quote, leave America or any of that type of stuff. And in the last year, I've realized, like, no, nope, I will be leaving America. It's just at what time? Well, what time period? In many ways, I'm two or three years late. Um, I'm not saying that there are many other places that are better than Florida, Texas, Arizona, maybe Tennessee, Wyoming, uh, as far as American states go but I'm looking at the world as it's unfolding and I'm like yeah I need to be diversified politically and I need to be diversified financially not just in like well I own a lot of domestic assets but they're diversified I own like oil I have precious metal I have mining stocks and real estate I have like work tools and, and you know trucks and tractors and stuff like that uh, cash, guns, like all, all those, you know, all the, the line item assets that you could list, uh, or value stores, maybe, maybe value stores is a better way to say that. But I just realized, I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty much like 100% domestically reliant. And so the biggest government that is the biggest problem in my life is the one that's closest to me. And the one that is closest to me is literally the most intrusive, uh, indebted, uh, freedom stripping, largest uh, per per you know dollars spent per year on all items uh, in the world. And that in is ten miles, US, turn left onto the, the Southwest US, Pine uh, Chapel Drive. The U.S. government, you know, and I'm like, yeah, I need to, I need to really diversify and away this risk. And so this past week, I've taken I've taken that time to kind of look at that. Um, I've also looked at for lack of a better term, democratizing, meaning making smaller uh, things like ranch land. I'm looking at Mexico, um, hoping to do a trip later part of this year. I'm actually going up to the Canada region. I know Canada's in, you know, got some bad press going right now, but I'm actually going up to like the upper peninsula and then I'm gonna take the sled over up into Canada, come down and all that stuff. My buddy and I are looking at some property up that way actually one of the largest copper deposit areas in the world um, and so he and I are like looking at some real estate up that way I found a uh, I found like a 34 acre island and I'm like yo dude it's got no utilities or anything on it and he's like this could be fun uh, but it's so cold in the winter it's like negative 10 negative 20 in the winter but the good thing is is you can drive a truck over the ice and set up your building materials 
and then in the summertime you can get out there and you got like three or four months of like you know go at it but I'm just like I'm, I'm looking at these different things and I'm, I'm trying to set up I'm trying to I'm trying to build the, the lifestyle that I want to have here over the next decade um, I've also got alternative fuel operation I've started working on this past week so for you guys that are on the email list I've got a alternative email I have an alternative fuel email list I've been messing with biodiesel since like 2007 since I bought this truck um, and I mean I, it was it's something that got it really got going like in 2008 2009 I was doing pretty good with it and then oil prices just dumped on me after that and so um, now oil is back on the rise and so that's going pretty well thus far so I've been working on that, working on item house cleaning items. But nonetheless, the uh, sabbatical from like taking in what's going on, so I'm relevant and relatively current to, to talk about ideas, uh, and just not listening to it has actually been amazing. So I don't know how I can square that with uh, creating great content for this channel and also being like a hermit where I just don't listen to the news at all. I just. I just do me and then just do my things. Um, but anyway, I thought it was, I thought it was good. Um, the democratizing of things is something that I will break down in a future video, but it's really interesting how, I, how you can see kind of co-ops. I see this in the biodiesel space, but people create these co-ops and that's really the, the use case for NFTs. It's like you're cre you're able, an NFT allows you to create a membership club, a membership group, if you will, and that allows you to say serve alcohol at a private golf course without a liquor license. Like, oh, well, we don't sell alcohol. We include it in the membership fees. And uh, to be a member, it's 20 grand a year to be a member of this golf club. And the, uh, and the Arnold Palmers are free, you know, are included. And so you, this membership idea, this legal form, gets you around this, these old institutions. And that'll be future videos. These institutions we have today in the West are so dated and out of, they're just, we don't need them. They, they come from a time in the late 1700s where it made sense. Um, it, it, they helped create the, the rise of the nation state. We see how bad this experiment has gone. We don't really understand how bad this experiment is gone because we don't understand accounting. And so, you know, the average American dude or, or guy in the West is like, he doesn't understand, like Henry Ford used to pay his workers $5 a day. A dollar was an ounce of silver. Uh, a $20 gold piece was an ounce of gold. Every Thursday, Henry Ford's workers, one, paid no income taxes because it was 1903. 1903, 1913, there's no income taxes. They get paid an ounce of gold, that's about $2,000 in today's value every Thursday for quote, non-skilled labor. We're paying these guys 100 grand a year uh, and they could buy a car, they, they, they could buy a car, I believe the Model T was going for 400 bucks. So you can break everything down into, um, into these ratios. And then obviously as they ramped up production and then there was a big used market, the price of those cars came down. It might've even been a hundred bucks at some point. Uh, but my point there being is that, you know, the average guy uh, with 20 to 80 days of his labor could buy a brand new automobile. Uh, and I know things were different. The roads weren't where they are now. You can't go as fast, all that stuff. But it's really interesting uh, that in today's world, though, that, that's the way it should be. You should be able to buy this truck um, for the same price. You should be able to buy this truck for 10 ounces of gold. Uh, which you can almost do. It's actually worth a little bit more than that now. It's like worth maybe 25 grand and that, so that would put us at like 12, 13 ounces of gold for this truck. Um, however, it's not new. It's, you know, a 200 plus thousand mile truck. It's 20 years old, like that type of stuff. You should be able to buy this new for 10 ounces of gold. And so I think that the world's going to return to these type of methods of accounting over the next 10 years. And I think that that's gonna create some really gnarly opportunities and for people that are ready for those opportunities and okay with change. And um, and for people that are not, I I think it's gonna be a rough period of time. I mean, you're looking at 
you know, we're, we're now in a world where we can blame everything on bad boy Putin, uh, who's a Chad, by the way. If you don't like Putin, you know, like, you don't like, like, I mean, I'm not, I'm not pro nation state at all, but if you're going to have a nation state, you want a guy like Putin running it. That's, it's really what you, it's really what you want. If, if you're going to be an empire, do empire stuff. Take back your old territories. Have a flat tax of 13%. Have no national debt. Be Russia. If you're going to be an empire, be Russia. Um, but I think that we're moving into a period of history where people are going to look around, especially Generation Z, and be like, does it make sense that we have uh, Congress? Does it make sense that we have Senate? Or a, a president that has two Air Force Ones to fly around on? I got a backup. And then they've got a backup for Air Force Two. So we've got, like, to our knowledge, you know, like four 747s armed to the teeth to transport around, like, Uncle Joey and Auntie Kamala. Like, does it really make sense? Like, does any of this make sense? And so, what the U.S. elites have done is they've essentially shot the dollar in the foot. Uh, they've, they've created these sanctions. They don't realize that no one is going to use the U.S. dollar in the next 10 years, 5 or 10 years. And they don't realize what that's going to do to the U.S. economy. They don't understand that we... Uh, we owe the boomers $100 trillion, about 95, but about $100 trillion in, in benefits. The world knows we're gonna print it. The US debt right now is 30 trillion. We take in tax receipts, we tax our citizens, three trillion. We spend four trillion. Last year we did 10 trillion in extra subsidies and bills and, and stupid things. So we spent way more than the, the $1 trillion deficit. My point is, this isn't sustainable. In two miles, and, turn left uh, onto Southwest Pine Chapel Drive. This whole thing long term is going away. And it's going to break down. And it's, it's what I refer to as American anarchy. Where the currency will fall. The market will decide new currencies. They might be Litecoin, Bitcoin, Monero, silver, gold. It might be silver, gold on a Volt chain. Something you can trade digitally. But is held at, a, at, a, at a, some sort of institutional safe or vault, whatever, you can probably, you know, ask, you know, you can probably have it, the physical brought to you on demand, I'm sure, um, but, but that's kind of the world I see us moving to, and that's a world where I don't see how we can afford the level of government we have today, so that's a world where we lay off government workers, there's going to be a lot of unemployment, there's going to be a lot of hunger, there's going to be a lot of homelessness, there's going to be a lot of violence, social unrest, and then we're going to get over that period of time, we're going to move forward, we're going to advance, hopefully, and uh, we'll move forward. Or it's totally possible we end up in a end of the Roman Republic Dark Age. Like that is a total possibility and a historical precedence. Um, but anyway, it's good to be back on here, guys. We'll be, uh, we'll be doing the daily video shipping. And um, you know, let me know in the comments what you guys are working on, what you guys are interested in, how you guys see things. We'll make videos around those subjects. And uh, I really appreciate you guys hitting that like button on these videos, sharing these videos with a friend, maybe posting them on social media, get the message out there. Um, because this channel is really gone, it's really having a great year. And that, that really is from you guys and me asking you guys, be down there in the comments, hit that like button, share this content. Uh, it, it really helps push that thing out in the, uh, in the YouTube algorithm and uh, it really makes a difference. So until the next video guys, thank you very much.